Okay, so let's start in our usual sitting position. Just removing flesh from sit bones. We'll take the palms to face up, closing the eyes. Roll your shoulders back and down a couple of times. And then just connecting to the breath. Breathing in and out through the nose. Allowing the shoulders to drop down. Relaxing into the space. And then taking the hands together at the heart center, bowing the head and just taking a moment to really connect within. Checking in on how you're feeling today. And most importantly, just becoming really mindful of any injuries or health concerns you might be working with. And remind yourself to work within your own limits. And of course, you can always customize the poses to suit you better as well. We'll solidify that intention by taking a deep breath in. Sighing to let go. Linking the eyes open, releasing the hands to the sides, lift them up overhead. And release down. Inhale, lift back up, start to look up. Releasing again. Taking one more. And release. Wonderful. So for our warm up today, we're actually gonna start on our knees. You'll open them out wide, take the big toes together, slide the hands forwards and start to drop the chest down towards the floor. You want to have an equal amount of pressure pushing back with the hips as you are reaching forwards so that our spine feels like it's elongating. And also just be mindful of what your head's doing. So the tendency in child's pose is to push the forehead to the floor. But when we do that, we stop our chest from moving. So you want to just float it a little bit. And then if you're feeling quite mobile here, try lifting up onto the fingertips, dropping the chest a little lower. And then press down into the fingers, walk the hands over to one side, inside hand's gonna reach further forwards, rooting down. Come back through the center, reach over opposite side, try to connect through the sit bone that's on the same side as your inside hand. And then back to the middle again. So we're gonna press into our hands, bring our knees now so they're in line with the hips, spread the hands wide, and start to make circles with your bottom and your hips. So we're trying to tuck under through the tailbone and then stick it up and make these big circles to the side as well. And then move in the opposite direction. And you can notice as you do this, how much mobility we actually have in the lower back. So for a lot of us, that's the most mobile part of our spine. And then just coming back into the center, into cat-cow. So dip the abdomen, make it relax, press down through the tops of the feet, chest forwards, inhale. Exhale, the opposite shape, push away, chin to chest, arching the back, draw up the head down. Inhale, coming forward again. Exhale, pushing away. Make sure this feels comfortable on your spine so you don't want it to hurt at all. And we're also trying to even out our back bend, so we don't want it to all come from the lower back. We're trying to find it through the upper back too. Now we bring it into a strength-based variation. You'll push away from the ground, arching back, sit towards your heels. Take the elbows down. Inhale, come forward. Shoulders over wrists, press, lift up. Arch through the back again. Sit towards the heels, elbows down. Option to come further forwards. Chin and chest towards the floor, sliding pressing, arching, and coming back. So you want to move as slowly as possible. This is, of course, a combination of a back bend and also a kind of gentle press up, but it can be a little bit uh, tough. I'm going to take one more of these. And then tuck under through your toes. We're gonna to push back. Make sure you've got a nice long line from the hands towards the hips. And then start to think about pedaling out through the legs. We can drop the head down. Make sure the neck feels relaxed. 
trying to sit and send even the sit bones high. And then if you feel comfortable, just holding this position still. Really firming down through the fingertips. And then slowly come back forward, lower down onto your knees, open them out a little bit wider again. And we take the elbows to the floor, press the hands together, push back, drop the chest down. Feel the stretch into the triceps, the armpits, the chest and the shoulders. Press down into the elbows, come back up onto your hands, tuck under through the toes again, push into downward facing dog. Now we're going to transition so that we come to sit down. You can try and do this by coming to the top of one foot, then the top of the other, we cross over at the ankles and come to sit down. If that doesn't work, just come down onto your knees and spin the legs around. So we're going to come here, make sure your bottom's kind of halfway through the mat. Turn your fingers away from you to start off with thumbs to the outsides, feet are about hip distance apart. I'm going to press into them, squeeze the glutes, start to lift up high and then you can either drop the head all the way back or keep the chin in towards the chest. Be a little bit mindful about your elbows here, we're not holding for too long. And then slowly releasing back down. Now turn the hands towards your hips and see if this is better. So this is my personal favourite. Squeezing between the shoulders, pressing, lifting up. Again, option to drop the head back. And the stronger you can push the ground away from you, the higher you'll lift. And as always in yoga, most of the strength is coming from the glutes. I'm going to bring the chin in towards the chest again, slowly lower down, send the legs in front of you, remove the flesh out from the sit bones and sit yourself high. So we tend to kind of fall like this when we sit down. If you struggle to roll forwards, take a little block or a book or something underneath you. Then extend up through the arms, try to pull them back a little bit, make sure head is stacked over shoulders and hips, and then begin to tip forwards. Inhale, reach back high. Exhaling, tipping forwards. Inhaling, reaching. Exhale. Take two more. One more. And then come all the way back up, release the hands down. We're going to take them behind us. So again, fingertips point forward, slight bend into the elbows, squeeze between the shoulders. You can either bend the legs up or from where they are, just a really small bend. You'll press, squeeze, lift all the way, Pavottanasana. Head back or chin in towards the chest for your choice. Take one more breath. And exhale slowly, release all the way down. Okay, so you're gonna turn your hands back out, bring your feet a little wider, and then just make sure the hands are more at a kind of 45 degree angle. Make sure the wrists feel okay, press into your feet, and just start to lift up like this. So you're just checking the placement of your hands. Come back down if that feels all right. We're gonna take one hand towards the heart. Go careful, we'll bend our elbow, Press, lift up, try and bring your arm up and overhead. And of course you can stop whenever it feels too strong. And exhale down. Inhale, press, lifting up. We're finding a slight back bend here, channeling the strength in our shoulders. And we have one more lifting. And exhale, release, very nice. Take it to the other side. Again, just set up, make sure that you feel okay with where your arms are. Switch over, press, Lift, reaching up and over, exhaling down. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. One more time, and lower down. Then cross your legs, lean forwards, hands to the floor. We're going to press into our feet, step back into your high plank pose. From there, Come to downward facing dog, and that's, um, this is more like your true alignment for downward facing. So it's a little bit wider than we were doing earlier. 
If you need to, you can bend your knees. We're trying to send the bottom high. And if you're happy to, straighten out through the backs of the legs. Inhale, come forwards into your high plank pose. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Inhale forwards, high plank. Exhale, downward facing. Take this twice more. And then on this time, we're coming forwards. We're going to drop down with our knees, untuck the toes, shoulders over wrists, look forwards, and slowly lower down. Walk the legs a little bit further back. Press down through the pubic bone and take your elbows underneath the shoulders or just a little way ahead. Push into them, pull the hands towards you, heart moves towards the front. Shouldn't feel this in your lower back. If you are, it's probably because you're relaxed. So you want to push down and just level out the lower back a bit more. When you're here, try rolling the head from one side to the other a little. Be really careful because it can be quite strong. and then release. Take the hands underneath the shoulders. So a common mistake in cobra pose is this, and I see this a lot. The shoulders are near the ears, there's not really much of a back bend other than in the lower back, and it just doesn't feel particularly comfortable. So instead, try and stay lower, squeeze between your shoulder blades, keep them active, and send the heart forwards rather than up. Do you see how the shoulders are now further away from the ears? If you've got the mobility, you can keep pushing and come up higher. You see the difference, chest is forwards rather than this. So we're traveling towards the front with a slight bend in the elbows. And exhale, release all the way down. So don't worry about how high up you come. Just keep listening to your body. And we're just gonna take a few of these in time with the breath. Waking up the spines. Encouraging more mobility in our thoracic spine, which is the upper back. And then press. Come all the way back up, tuck under through your toes, and we're coming into our downward facing dog again. Now walk the hands back towards the feet. So you end up at the back of your mat. You know, bend your knees, hold on to your elbows, drop the head, rock from side to side. And we're really trying to get our chest onto our thighs here, so we don't want to be too high up. If you're quite close to the ground, just body proportion allows it, then you might be able to take the hands down instead and help you rock side to side. Alternatively, you can then pedal out through one leg, then the other. It's really important you never lock out with your knee. So when I say straighten the leg, it doesn't mean kind of force it back. It just means stack the bones one on top of the other. But a slight bend in the knee is always um, beneficial. Okay, so from here, hands come back down. We're going to walk them forwards into your high plank pose. Lower down again, knees, toes, chest. Squeeze between the shoulders. Remember the heart is coming forwards. Exhale all the way back, downward facing dog. Look between the hands. Start to walk the feet up towards them. Keeping the knees nice and bent, walk the hands back. Take another forward fold. Now find the hands onto the shins, lengthen up halfway. If you come to this shape with your hands on the shins, you're going to take them onto the thighs and extend the heart further forwards. So it doesn't matter how high up you come, just make sure that the spine is flat. Exhale, hold the backs of the legs, bend the knees, head down. Inhale, press, lift, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. 
Inhale, press, lengthen again. Exhaling, folding. Press into your feet and slowly rise all the way up to stand. Arms reach up overhead. Exhale, hands to heart. Good, okay, we're gonna step out to the side taking our triangle pose. So you want one foot pointing towards the short edge of the mat, back foot in 45 degrees, reset with your hips, arms out, shoulders down. Good, now I'm seeing this quite a lot at the moment as well. Hands are kind of, they look active, but there's not much there. So really try and pull your hands apart. Every muscle in your arm should be working. We're gonna tip forwards, take the back of the hand against the leg, reach high through the other one, chins tucked in looking towards the thumb. If it's too strong, you can always take the hand onto the hip and you can come as low down as feels comfortable. Just make sure you're not coming too far forwards. Take one more breath. And exhale, look down towards the big toe. Inhale, rise all the way back up, reset with your hips. We're going to go towards the edge of the mat now, or the back. Tipping forwards, back of the hand comes down. Remember, active arms, pull them away from each other. Tucking in the chin, looking up, keeping a slight bend into that front leg. And exhale, look down towards the big toe. Inhale, press, rise back up. We're gonna spin around to the front again, this time bending into the front knee. Now notice how my knee can then overshoot the ankle. So if that's you, you're just gonna slide the front foot a little bit further forwards and then take your bend. You also wanna see the big toe on the inside of the knee and it's really important. Um, we can put too much pressure on the knee when we kind of roll it in. So you always have it tracking towards the middle toe. Look over the front middle finger. Stay nice and strong here. And then release the forearm down towards the thigh. Extend up and over with your top hand. Again, we're trying to look towards the sky underneath the arm. And then ensure that you maintain the bend on the front leg as you press, rise back up. Good, then straighten, flip around with your feet. They should be aligned nice and ready for our tri um, triangle warrior two on the next side. So keep drawing the knee out behind you, pulling those hands away, look over the front middle finger. And another thing to check in with is have you moved your shoulders forwards like to set? So just make sure that they are stacked directly over the hips. And then as before, we'll lower the forearm onto the thigh, extend the arm up overhead. We're creating one lovely line from this top hand all the way to the toes on the back leg. Exhale, look towards the big toe. Press, inhale, rise back up, maintaining the bend. Good, and then straighten. Flip all the way around to the front. Windmill your hands down, step back. High plank pose, adjust if necessary. Drop down with one knee. Roll to the inside of the other foot, open out to the side. And then bring that top arm up overhead. So this is Vasistasana, side plank position. We can make this a little bit stronger if we want to on the next round. Come back up into your plank pose, drop down opposite knee, roll to the inside, extend. Release that hand down. We're gonna switch over again. So you're coming into your first shape. Now when you're here, slide this top foot forwards. From there, try, keep that bend into the lower arm and slide the other leg behind pushing away from the ground so it's not here. We're finding height, lifting up nice and high. Good, spread the fingers on the top hand. If it's too much, you just drop your knee down. Roll to the other side. So this one's easier because your feet are already in the right position. Good. 
and exhale, release. Come back into your plank pose, drop down with the knees, the toes, the chest. Squeeze between the shoulders again, peeling up as high as feels comfortable. Exhale all the way back, downward facing dog. Look between your hands. As you breathe in, you're going to walk, step, or lightly jump the feet forwards towards the hands. And it doesn't matter where they fall. Then lift. Find that lengthening point. Exhale to forward fold. Press into your legs. Rise all the way up to stand. Arms up overhead. And hands to heart. Yeah, time to balance. So, spread the toes. We'll start with our tree and then we're going to build up and hopefully this ankle will become super strong by the end of it. So either heel against the ankle or slide it to the calf or pick up the leg and carefully place it onto the thigh. Try not to bend down to force it up. Hip square, draw the knee out to the side, hands to heart or up overhead pressing the arms together or apart, shoulders down and relax. Then when you're in this position, you wanna think about what your core muscles are doing. It's not just abs, so it's pelvic floors, the muscles around uh, the lower back too. So feel like you've got a hugging sensation all around the torso and you're lifting the pelvic floor ever so slightly. Good. So we're going for longevity. We're gonna try and play around with some different shapes here. Slowly release the hands down Pick the leg off your thigh or calf, wherever it was, and take hold of the shin. Pull the knee in closer towards you. Make sure you don't lean back when you do this, which is quite common, it'll put too much strain here. So we're just stacking again, head, hips, heels. Then take hold of the knee in the same hand, open the other arm out to the side, spread the fingers, palm up. Slowly draw the knee out towards the side, trying to keep the hips level towards the front. Good. And then bring the knee back to the center. We're gonna switch over with our hands. This hand now reaches behind you and as best you can, if you've got the space, straighten it out. You could possibly think about looking over the shoulder behind you as well, should you wish. Lovely. So hopefully the ankle that we're working hard at the moment is starting to feel quite fiery. Good, back to the center, hands to the heart. Hold your leg in this position. One, two, three. Awesome, take the foot down, well done. Let's take it to the other side. So heel again can go on that um, ankle, it could go on the calf or pick the leg up and then place it against the thigh. There's so much happening here. So if you feel like your foot constantly slides off, it's because you're not pushing pushing, pushing <laughs> the foot against the thigh enough. So there's quite a force there and the thigh also meets back against the foot. As you can see, I'm in quite fluffy socks and leggings. There's not really an excuse <laughs> for it to fall off. Again, we've got the option to extend the arms up. You can press the palms together or find that space and relaxation around the shoulders. Wonderful. If you really struggle with your balance, it's usually to do with your gaze and just kind of where your mind is at on that day. So try and look down, maybe two or three meters ahead of you. Find a fixed point to really stare at and also feel like the arch in your foot is lifting, feeling rooted down through all four corners. You know, release our arms down, take hold of the leg, pull it in towards you. Again, let's keep that head stacked directly over the heel. Wonderful. Take hold of your knee. Open the other arm out to the side, palm faces up, draw the leg out. Wonderful. Good. And then slowly draw it back into the centre, switch over with your arm, extend out through the opposite one. See if you can maybe look over the shoulder behind you. And then look to the front, bring both hands forwards at the heart center, hold one, two, three, 
and release the leg down, give your legs a little shake. And then if you find the ankle really sore, you can always do this, where you go onto the top of the foot and kind of have a little roll from side to side and that can feel quite nice as well. All right, coming into a nice stretchy bit now. Step to the top of your mat, inhale, lift the arms. Maybe take a slight back bend, we've been doing lots of lovely stuff for the spine. Exhale, hinge forwards, bend the knees if needed, head down, hands down. Inhale, lift lengthen halfway. Exhale, hands to the floor, step or jump into your high plank position. Drop down knees, toes, chest. Squeeze between the shoulders, inhale, lift. Maybe you're starting to glance up. Exhale, push back, keep the knees together. Wrap the hands around, hold your heels, shoulders roll forward and press the forehead to the floor. Inhale, start to come back up. We're going to sit on our knees. Now, I appreciate some people can't do this. Um, and it can be tightness in the quads. It could be tightness in the hips. It might just not feel comfortable. Also, tops of the feet. A lot of people have um, flexibility issues there too. So, with that being said, <laughs> flip it around and sit cross-legged if you prefer. We're going to take our hands onto our legs, whichever way they are. And start by pulling them towards you. Then stick your bottom out. Arch through your back. Chest is lifting up. Look towards the ceiling. Exhale, do the opposite. So slide the hands towards the knees. Kind of curl in on yourself. Chin to the chest. Inhale, slide them up. Open up around the heart. Exhaling. Inhale again, opening up. Get exhale. And then with your arms, so now we're going to open them out wide, squeeze between your shoulders, so that's what's giving this lovely stretch across the chest. Exhale, arms up overhead. Inhale again, opening out, finding that gentle back bend. Wonderful. Exhale, arms overhead. Take one more. Exhaling forwards. And release into a neutral spine position. So from there, you're very welcome to stay sitting on your knees if that feels comfortable or flip round and sit cross-legged for our last couple of postures. And these are for the shoulders. So we'll start with our arms in this position we've just been doing. You're going to cross underneath with one. Wrap the hands around. Take the tightest bind you can, but don't get caught up on it. Draw the elbows forwards. Hands up. Shoulders slide down the back. Chin towards the chest. Remember which arm is underneath as you open out, release. We're going to take our hands behind us, squeeze between the shoulders, lift the heart, look up, draw the hands towards the floor. Exhale, release. Take your arms the opposite way now. Again, forwards, up, shoulders down, chin to chest. And lift the head, open the arms out. So now you're taking the hands behind you, holding onto the wrists, squeeze between the shoulders, slide them down, chin towards the chest. So here, as before, you can do those little rolls from one side to the other. Again, being mindful not to overstretch. This can be an area of a lot of tightness for a lot of us. Lovely, and then pause with the chin down towards the chest, taking the hands together. Close your eyes just for a moment. And just notice how the body feels after that movement, after checking in with the breath. And take a moment to thank yourself for practicing today, moving your body in perhaps a way you've not before. 
the checking inwards, seeing how the body's feeling, and also connecting to your breath, which is such an important practice. Slide the hands up in between the eyebrows and blink the eyes open, gazing down. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope to see you next week. Well done.